tea certified premium black angus beef has a proven reputation for excellence by combining the superior eating quality of the angus breed and the science of the meat standards australia grading system to guarantee an unrivaled eating experience every time And one thing a lot of people are asking me more and more is why do we dry age the beef and how do you dry age your beef? And if you're dry aging your beef, doesn't it go off or doesn't it go mouldy or how would I do that at home? Most of the beef you buy comes cryovacked or vacuum sealed now. Very convenient, it's very good for storage. It's an anaerobic ageing process in there, which means it doesn't have contact to oxygen, which is very good. but. As you probably know, a lot of restaurants now, including mine, are big on dry aging product. Now, basically when we dry age, what we want to do is we want to get this piece of meat out of the anaerobic environment it's living in, and we want to get it access to oxygen as much as it can for a period of time to basically activate the aerobic enzymes that help it to naturally age. What those enzymes will do will help to break down the beef so it's, it's more tender and it has a, has a different flavour complexity. Now, the natural sugar levels, the glycogen levels in the steak actually raise and what you get is a better sear when you're searing the product off. Also what you're going to get is a much sweeter, much more beefy flavoured product. I've got a lovely porterhouse here that I've just taken a section off. Now you could, you could definitely contact your butcher or supplier, grocer, and ask them for a piece of porterhouse like this also. We put this in the fridge on a plate. What's going to happen is you're probably going to get a little bit on the bottom, start to, start to sweat, start to mould, and your product's going to start to go off, basically. So what I'm going to teach you to do is get a rack and a tray, and what I like to use is some of these antibacterial chuck rolls. You can also use a muslin cloth, but these are super handy and super available. Now, we're just going to wrap it up, and what this is going to do is it's going to stop any, stop any nasties from landing on there, but still allow it to breathe and get that oxygen through there and also being antibacterial, it's going to stop any bacteria growing on there to a certain degree. Now what we'll do is we'll get a bit of, get a bit of string, a bit of butcher's twine and we'll just secure that so that it doesn't come undone. And then we're going to sit that in the fridge probably, probably for up to about a week. You probably don't need to go too much more than a week, but even a couple of days you'll start to get some dry aging. What you're, uh, what you're going to expect is about a 10% moisture loss in the first 72 hours. So as you can see if you get a 10% moisture loss you're going to get a lot more flavour intensity. Now, just tie that off like so and that will keep it all nice and neat. And then here's one I prepared not so long ago. So when you're ready to go you can unwrap that and what you'll notice is that the product in there it's basically got a bit more a bit more of a red colour and it's a little bit crispy on the outside and it's quite a bit smaller. So when you cut a steak off there you're going to have a much more intense flavour and it's going to be a lot crispier when you barbecue it or when you grill it. Something you might want to try at home and see how your results go but there you go dry aged porterhouse easy as pie try it at home.